Apocalypse Now by Desutoria Chapter 15 Hideki, that was amazing, said a stunned Harmony. Hideki rarely battled anymore, and even more rarely did he use his favorite Pokemon. Harmony hadn't seen Helena in action since she'd first seen Hideki battle for his Kanto Championship on TV nearly three years ago. Heh, <laughs> Hideki said with a smirk. Withdraw all your pokes as you walk around the body, guys. No risk. Yo, what the hell, man? Said a voice from afar, and not belonging to any member of the group. Hideki turned his head to find the source of the voice. On a hill above the Future City Gate, there now stood two figures. The first, the one Hideki presumed had spoken to him, was moderately small in stature but seemed to carry an air of great confidence. He wore a sleek blue tracksuit with what appeared to be very expensive matching shoes. Next to him stood another young man, this one with a long black overcoat and a slightly more relaxed demeanor. That your Snorlax? Hideki asked flatly. He was dead before I got to him, bro. Nah, that thing was wild, explained Overcoat. It was sealing off one potential entry to our hideout, though. Maybe next time you should think first before you start zapping shit, said Tracksuit coldly. Maybe next time it won't attack me and my crew, jackass. Oh, you want to start something? <laughs> Hideki scoffed before walking back to support Harmony so she could walk past the Snorlax's body without the Dragonite's assistance. Damn, that's a hot piece of ass you got there, though, Tracksuit remarked. This comment sparked a fire inside Hideki, which he swallowed as he kept walking. All I'm saying is, I'd hit that. Ha! Harmony exclaimed without thinking, before covering her mouth and continuing to giggle to herself. This was more of a show for Hideki than anything. In truth, the more mild-mannered Harmony was only slightly offended by the stranger's taunts. Well, you better keep your bitch in line, man. Oh, I'm about to put a bitch in her place, all right, Hideki finally said as he turned his head and reached for the golden Pokeball on his belt. Harmony gripped his wrist firmly and shook her head. Let's let let it go, Hideki. It's it's not worth it. He looked at her sharply. This is about survival, remember? You can't worry about pricks by him. Let it go. Hideki paused, closed his eyes, and <sighs> sighed deeply. She was right. He knew she was right. But he felt like he'd be failing her somehow if he didn't stand up for her. As if reading his thoughts, Harmony smiled and moved her hand from his wrist up to his shoulder. It's okay, really. I'm a big girl. I don't care what he says. This was all he needed. Without another glance back at the two men, Hideki continued forward through the gate, serving as a crunch for Harmony, with V and Xerxes following close behind. And hey, that little blonde bitch, ain't she a little young for you, man? Jesus! Javai, they've been gone for a while now. I think you can stop yelling at him. Man, fuck you, Diddy. I'm just having some fun. Can I do that? Can a nigga have a little fun around here, Diddy? Guy, you're such a buzzkill. Javai kept mumbling something as he walked off back to the gym where the two had taken refuge. Diddy looked at the southern horizon for a few seconds before pulling a ball from his belt. Almost every building in Fuchsia City was destroyed except the gym. The town was littered with corpses of what Hideki recognized as Pokemon from the nearby Safari Zone, but these corpses were mutilated in strange ways. Limbs, and in some cases heads, had been severed neatly. A few had their chest cavities cut up in the classic Y-cut. It was as if someone had dissected these Pokemon. A large wall of fire blocked the gateways to the east and the Safari Zone to the north. Someone had gone to great lengths to secure this area. They stopped by the Pokemon Center in desperation. Xerxes had suggested it would be prudent to look, just on the off chance the machine was still optional, and Birdo and Big Bird's wings could be repaired. But, as expected, the machine had been demolished along with the rest of the facility. The rest of the town, for that matter. Everyone got a surfer? Hideki asked the group as they reached the southern beach. I can ride on Starhu, but he's only big enough for just me. I got myself covered, Xerxes said proudly. Guys, meet Knack. Xerxes threw a ball into the tide, releasing a Feraligator. The Pokemon splashed around happily in the shallow waves, having no understanding of its surroundings or the grim circumstances that they were in. V. You can't use Surf yet either, can you? Hideki asked, making a real effort to sound as non-condescending as possible. V lowered her head and shook it slightly. She was starting to feel underdressed among all the champions and ex-champions in their group. All these years of experience around her, and she only had an Ivysaur for about a week. She started to feel more and more 
like a burden. No need to worry, Harmony said with a smile. Holly can take us both. Harmony released her lapras deep into the waves, and she too splashed about with delight. Harmony then realized just how long it had been since she'd let Holly out into the water. She considered that the last time was probably a few months ago, during her Kanto gym challenge. Quite possibly when she was en route to their exact destination, Cinnabar Island. Hey, hold up, guys, a voice called from above. The four trainers looked up. It was Overcoat from before, flying towards them on the back of an aerodactyl. Where y'all headed? He asked as he landed and recalled his Pokemon. No one responded. V and Harmony looked away from their visitor. Xerxes looked at him quizzically, and Hideki stared at him with an intense look of intimidation. Ah, right, he said to himself quietly. Look, you guys, I'm sorry for what Javide said earlier. He's, well, he's just like that, I'm afraid, but I apologize on his behalf. He looked at Harmony. To you especially, miss. That what you followed us for? Hideki asked. To apologize? Um, yeah, basically. And, you know, see what kind of shape you were all in. I figure, given the times, I mean, I'm surprised to find any survivors left. It's only right to help you guys if I can. He approached Hideki and extended his hand. People call me Diddy. No, it's not my real game. I just liked it. Hideki looked at Diddy for a long and uncomfortable period of time. He couldn't sense any deception in him, nor could he come up with any motive to try and trap them. Best he could tell, his politeness was genuine. Having finally passed the mental test, Hideki accepted his hand. I'm Hideki. This is Harmony, Xerxes, and the little one's V. Hideki, Harmony, hold on, Diddy said to himself as he shifted his glance back and forth between the two. Yeah, you're the Indigo League champ, aren't you? He said, looking at Harmony. That's right, she smiled. And you probably know Hideki for holding the same title a few years ago, but still. Yeah, I remember you. Oh, you were freaking great, man. What happened to you? Diddy regretted his words as soon as he said them. Sorry, I I didn't mean for it to come out like... <laughs> Hideki laughed quietly. It's cool. You're right. I kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Let's call it a semi-retirement. This response answered none of his questions, but Diddy politely accepted the answer without further prodding. Xerxes <coughs> coughed subtly in the background. Oh, you should know Xerxes too. He was the Indigo Champion too, but this was way back when. Xerxes scrunched up his face slightly at the remark. Well, damn, you guys are quite a team. Maybe I was wrong to worry about you after all. We're quite capable, Hideki assured him. We'll be fine. Thank you for your concern, though, Harmony said happily. Whoa, hold on a minute, Diddy said as he noticed Harmony's bandaged leg. That doesn't look good. I'm fine, really. Wait, Hideki said. I couldn't help but notice someone had gone through, uh, to do some work on some of the bodies in the city. You don't happen to have a doctor in your group, do you? No, I'm afraid not, Diddy said. That guy's great at cutting him up, but I wouldn't trust him to sew you back together again. This strange comment sat in the air for a moment, resulting in a rather uncomfortable silence. Well, um, we really need to get going. Right, you're headed for Cinnabar, I assume? Smart move surfing. The skies aren't safe, but as far as we can tell, the water should be. Just make sure you have something out that can take the occasional random bird. You never know with this virus. Solid advice, Hideki said as he got on Star Who's back. You take care, Diddy. You too, guys.